So people should try and prepare early and have a bath, put on your best clothes, use miswak, use some itar and come to the masjid early. And whosoever recites the wood upon the Prophet or salat upon the Prophet once and says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Allah sends 10 blessings upon that person. But in the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because the community in Medina grew and spread, and so Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu introduced a second adhan. Allah says, Fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Come running to the remembrance of Allah. And here the Mufassireen are in unanimous agreement. Dhikrillah here implies khutbah. And never ever throughout their lives is there even a single incident being reported in any book of hadith with sahih or weak narration in which a khutbah was given in anything but Arabic. My dear brothers and respected elders, with Allah's fazal and mercy, He's given us the best of everything. He's given us the best of the books, the best of the prophets, the best of the deens, and the best of the days the best of the nights, the best of the houses. Uh, Allah has made us in the ummah of His beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most noble of His prophets, given us His kalam, uh, khayrul kalam, kalamullah. Uh, and Allah has given us the best of the deens, deen of Islam. Allah has given us Makkatul Mukarma, Baytullah, uh, and, and Madinatul Munawwara. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he prayed, Allahumma ja'al bil madinati da'ifai ma ja'alta min al barakati bi Makkah. Ya Allah, whatever barakah you've put in, in Makkah, whatever barakah you've put in Makkah, put twice as much in Medina. Allah has given us the best of the days. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Khayru yawmin tala'at alayhi shamsu yawmul jumu'ah. The best of the days upon which the sun shone is the day of Jumu'ah. This is the day Allah created Adam alayhi salam. This is the day he was admitted into Jannah. And this is the day he was taken out. And when Qiyamah shall occur, it will also be a day of Jumu'ah. The Christians, they chose Sunday. The Jews, uh, the Jews chose Saturday. And Allah reserved Friday for the Ummah of his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And especially on this day, along with other occasions Allah has blessed this ummah inna fil jumu'ati la sa'atun la yuwafiquha abdun muslimun yas'alu Allah khayran illa a'tahu iyyahu on the day of jumu'ah there is a special moment and Allah has kept that a secret and whenever any muslim asks Allah for anything good yas'alu Allah khayran illa a'tahu iyyahu that Allah grants him whatever he has asked uh, and Allah has kept that a secret. Uh, many of the mashayikh and the pious ancestors, uh, they used to consider this to be uh, in between Jumu'ah, the khutbah, or in between the two khutbahs, uh, and in between the khutbah and the salah, or immediately after salat, or sometimes after asr. But on the day of Jumu'ah, there is definitely a sa'ah, a time, a moment. Whatever dua a person makes, Allah acknowledges and accepts that dua. Uh, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has encouraged the Muslims and the believers to do to do many things on the day of Jumu'ah, uh, to give it the importance that the, the, the day of Jumu'ah deserves. Many people take uh, Jumu'ah very lightly. Uh, many people take Jumu'ah very lightly. There are other prayers, the usual prayers we can pray anywhere. Uh, one of the things Allah has blessed this ummah with, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَجُعِلَتْ لِيَ الْأَرْضُ مَسْجِدًا وَتَهُورًا And the Prophet said, Allah has made the whole world, the whole earth, a clean place for me to pray. Wherever the time comes, if a person can't get to the masjid, then he can offer his prayer anywhere that he may find himself. Uh, but and along with other prayers as well, we are encouraged to pray in the masjid. Uh, we should pray with the people who pray and try and get to the masjids. Uh, because a prayer prayed in the masjid deserves uh, and is worth much more than what a person can ever pray at home or anywhere else. Uh, but other prayers 
or it is permissible if a person for whatever reason can't get to the masjid then he can pray at home or at his business or at his farm or in the mountains or jungle wherever he may be but for people who are resident at home and are healthy and grown up and for men it is obligatory to come and pray their Juma Salat uh, with the congregation in Masajid where Juma takes place. And the Prophet Sallallahu in one hadith has been reported to have said, Man taraka thalathu Juma'in tahawunan Whosoever neglects three Juma's, uh, three Juma's either casually by looking down upon uh, or not giving Juma the importance that it deserves or lazily simply can't be bothered illa tab'allahu ala qalbi if a person neglects three Juma's out of laziness he can't be bothered then Allah will seal his heart uh, in another hadith it is it is mentioned that people should stop missing their Juma's People should stop missing and neglecting the Juma Salat, otherwise Allah will seal their hearts and they will find themselves among the ghafilin, among the negligent, and then they will lose importance for deen and Islam and their hearts will become sealed. Jumu'ah is very, very important for Muslims. Allah has given a special command in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. And Allah has revealed a special surah upon Jumu'ah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, idha nudiya lissalati min yawmi al-Jumu'ah, fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Oh, you believers, when you are called to, on the day of Jumu'ah, uh, for salah, idha nudiya lissalah, when you are called for salah, Fasa'aw, come running towards the dhikrullah. Come running towards Allah's remembrance. Wadharul bay'r. And when you are called, when the adhan is said for Jumu'ah, then leave whatever you are doing, your businesses and your affairs, leave them. Uh, and even though they may be halal, legitimate sources of income, uh, but on the day of Jumu'ah, when the adhan for Jumu'ah is called, uh, then leave everything. فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ ذَٰلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is surely definitely better for you if only you were to know. If only you knew. And in the time of Sahaba, and the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people would start to, pray, to prepare and start coming to the masjids early in the morning. And when the day of Jumu'ah sets in, and then there Allah appoints, Allah sends angels, they stand by the gate of the masjid and they, and they start recording and taking register as it were. And when people are in schools or colleges, then the teacher takes a register and the angels record who's attending. The first person who comes for Yawmul Jumu'ah and for Salatul Jumu'ah, uh, he's given the reward as though he slaughtered a camel. Then the next person as though he started, slaughtered a cow. Then the next person as though he slaughtered a goat. Then the next person as though he, sla he slaughtered a chicken. And then for, as though the next person will get the reward of someone who gives an egg or sad for, for sadaqah. And then the reward decreases until the imam when he stands to deliver khutbah, then the angels also close the register. And so anybody who comes afterwards as though he will be marked absent, he finds himself missing. And then Allahu Akbar, then the angels and they stop and they also listen to the khutbah which the Imam recites. Uh, although some or Ramah are of the opinion, uh, in light of a hadith, Man adraka rakatan faqad adraka salah, whosoever finds one rakat of his salah. And he says in the hadith, Waman adraka ruku'a faqad adraka rakat. Whosoever obtains a ruku in any rakat, then he as though he obtains that rakat. And whosoever obtains one rakat in any salat, in jama'at, then it's as though he will be given the reward of that salat. So if a person comes late even for Jumu'ah, but he's able to get the ruku of the second rakat, then as though he will be given, he's regarded as someone who's participated in Yawm Jumu'ah, and for him it will be sufficient. Other ulama have another opinion that as long as a person joins the salat, 
before the Imam makes salam, then it is sufficient. Uh, but in light of the first hadith, uh, whosoever finds the ruku will find the rakaat, and whosoever finds the rakaat as though he finds the whole salat. Uh, so whosoever uh, finds ruku of the second rakat when the Imam is praying, then for him as though Jumu'ah has been completed and he gets the reward of Jumu'ah. And anyone who finds comes in late, then although he completes the two rakat, uh, but then he should pray Zuhur Salat and uh, the full four rakats because he didn't get any reward uh, for the because he did not get any rakat. So as though he did not get the prayer, as though he was not part of Jumu'ah. Samajari? Yes. Ah. So Jumu'ah is very, very important. Ah. And Sahaba Ridwanullah on the day of Jumu'ah, they will leave their homes early. And the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged people, ah, Jumu'ah. And that a person, he should have a bath on the day of Jumu'ah. Summa labisa min ahsani thiyabihi. And then a person should put on his best clothes. Uh, and also use, make use of fragrance, itr, uh, musk, Allahu Akbar. Then he comes to the masjid and he doesn't jump over the shoulders of people. And then he prays whatever, at least two rakats. And then he joins the salat, listens to the khutbah and prays his salat. Then whatever sins he's committed from the previous Juma to this. And then this becomes a compensation for his sins. From one Juma to the next. Ah, Allahu Akbar. And Muslims have also been encouraged to recite uh, Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jumu'ah. And it says in a hadith as well, whosoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on the day of Jumu'ah, and every Jumu'ah he re- he's in the habit of reciting this Surah, then this Surah becomes a compensation for the sins from one Jumu'ah to the next Jumu'ah. Allahu Akbar. Uh, so people should try and prepare early and have a bath, put on your best clothes, use miswak, use some itr and come to the masjid early. And Allah give tawfiq. Uh, people should recite Surah Kaf and the Prophet Wasallam also said, فَأَكْثِرُوا عَلَيَّ فِيهِ مِنَ الصَّلَاةِ and on the day of Jumu'ah, people should try and recite as much salat upon the Prophet as they can. As much darood upon the Prophet as they can. Uh, salat upon the Prophet, Man salla alayya marratan sallallahu alayha bi ashara. And whosoever recites the rood upon the Prophet or salat upon the Prophet once and says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad or sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then Allah sends ten blessings upon that person. Uh, so salat upon the Prophet is a very special amal. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah Himself and His angels, they send rahmat upon, upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the angels, when they send rahmat, in other words, they pray to Allah. Our rahmat is Allah's mercy. Allah sends it. So when angels send it, that means they pray to Allah. Ya Allah, have mercy and send barakah upon your beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we send salat, uh, we also say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Oh Allah, you send your rahmat and your blessings and your fazl upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his al, his family, his followers, uh, as you have been sending mercy upon Ibrahim and his followers and his children and his generations. Inna ka hamidun majid. As you are all praiseworthy and all glorious. When people come to the masjid on the day of Jumu'ah, obviously like any other time, whenever people come, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has encouraged people that when people come, that they should read two rakat before sitting down. This is known as Tahiyatul Masjid. According to some Aima, when it comes, it's important. According to Imam Abu Hanifa, uh, it's a desirable uh, and mustahab, but nevertheless a sunnah and a preferred sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But if a person happens to sit down uh, before saying his two rakat, then the time for Tahiyatul Masjid has lapsed. And similarly on the day of Jumu'ah, when a person comes, uh, on the day of Jumu'ah, the first thing which is obligatory is the first adhan. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there used to be only one adhan for Jumu'ah. And people would come before that, they would already be in the masjid mostly, and anybody who hadn't come, when they would hear adhan, they would rush to the masjid, leave everything, and then... And, uh, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would start his khutbah. But in the time of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, because the community in Medina grew and spread. And so Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu introduced a second adhan. 
And, in, and uh, the first azan used to take place and then people would be given time to pray rakatain or sunnah and there is a difference of opinion amongst ulama. In one hadith it is stated in Tabrani and that, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this hadith has been reported by Ibn Abbas Hakana yusalli arba'an qabla al-jumu'ati wa arba'an ba'daha and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would pray four rakats before jumu'ah and four rakats afterwards. It, and there is a hadith in Mus'hi Muslim as well, in which the Prophet ﷺ has encouraged people to pray four rakats after Jumu'ah. And then in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ has been reported to pray another two rakats when he would go home. So some imma give, give tatbiq to all these riwayats. Uh, so, uh, uh, so you pray four first, then another four, and then another two, then that will incorporate all the hadiths. Some people only pray two before and two afterwards because there are hadiths in which it is mentioned two rakatain before Jumu'ah, rakatain baad al Jumu'ah. Uh, but in other hadiths, uh, four rakats before Jumu'ah, four rakats after Jumu'ah, and then another two rakats. Uh, so if a person does this way, then all the hadiths will be incorporated. But if a per and then the second adhan is said, and then after the second adhan, uh, the Imam stands to give khutbah. And when the Imam stands to give khutbah, then even the angels stop everything and then they come and they listen to the khutbah of the Imam. Some people, they consider khutbah to be like a waz, like advice, like nasiha. And although that is the case, uh, but the fundamental and primary status of khutbah uh, is dhikrullah. As Allah mentions in, in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha nudiya lissala, everybody comes to uh, Jumu'ah for prayer, but Allah says, fas'aw ila dhikrillah, when you are called for prayer, then come running to dhikrullah, come running to the remembrance of Allah. Although prayer will take place, and prayer is oblig obligatory, but Allah doesn't say, fas'aw ila salah, Fas'aw ila al-ibadah. Allah says, Fas'aw ila dhikrillah. Ha, come running, ha, come running to the remembrance of Allah. And here the mufassirin are in unanimous agreement. Dhikrillah here implies khutbah. So people should try and get to the masjid before the khutbah starts. And once the khutbah starts, ha, then, إِذَا خَرَجَ الْإِمَامُ فَلَا صَلَاةَ وَلَا كَلَامًا and when Imam stands to give khutbah, then there is no prayer and there is no kalam. If a person is doing something inappropriate for another person to say, in sit, faqad laga. It's not even permissible for someone to stop somebody else from doing something inappropriate. If someone is talking, someone doing something else, and another person says, don't do this brother, even that is not permissible. Because when the Imam stands to give khutbah, then everybody must give their full attention to the Imam and listen to him attentively. Even the angels who were recording the presence, whoever is coming in, uh, even they stop, they close their sahifa, and they also come and listen to the khutbah. And according to many ulama, there is no even salat. If a person comes and the Imam is giving khutbah, uh, then they should just sit down and they should listen. Some ulama are of the opinion that if a person hasn't prayed, uh, then he should pray two rakats and, that, and, and the dalil is taken from the amal of his habi Sulaik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when he once he came to the masjid, sat down, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had, had mounted the mimbar, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he saw him, he, he asked him, have you prayed two rakat? And he said, no. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, then stand and pray to rakats. And while he remained praying, the Prophet ﷺ qa'ada ala al-mimbar. The Prophet did not start khutbah. And the Prophet remained sitting upon the mimbar and allowed him to finish his two rakats. And Sahaba, they say, this was a special incident because Sulaik was a very, very poor man and his Poverty was evident from his clothes. He was wearing very tatty clothes. And the Prophet ﷺ then after the salah wanted to encourage people to help him and to give him charity. And, and this is why he asked them to stand and pray. Because if the Prophet picked them out from the congregation and said, have you prayed? Then obviously everybody's attention would have been at him.
And so everybody saw what he was like. And when after the Salah, then the Prophet encouraged people to give him Sadaqah, so it shows the real intention why the Prophet ﷺ commanded him to pray then, was to attract the attention of people towards him, so that they would be encouraged to help their brother and to help a person in need. Otherwise, the general practice of the Sahaba Ridwanullah was uh, whenever the Imam would have started, then nobody used to say their prayer afterwards. And then when the khutbah starts uh, in many parts of the world, although in the time of Rasulullah وسلم, uh, khutbah was the main. And the Prophet وسلم's khutbah used to be brief. Uh, when he would pray, the Prophet وسلم, in Jumu'ah Salat, often he would recite first rakat, Sabbihisma Rabbika Lala, second rakat, Halataka Hadithul Ghashiya. And it, takes, it doesn't take very long uh, to recite his Salat with these two surahs. And the Prophet's khutbah would be shorter than his Salat. And in fact, in Hadith it is mentioned, keep your khutbahs short and, you, and prolong your Salat. And so the Salat is longer than the khutbah. And the khutbah, if the salat of the Prophet was short, then you can imagine how short his khutbah used to be. And it is recommended that in the khutbah, khutbah begins with the praise of Allah. And ulama have stated and that in the khutbah there are two main, two main things. One is uh, for the time of dhuhr salat to have set in. It is not permissible to give khutbah of Jumu'ah before the waqat and before the time for Jumu'ah sets in. And so main thing is time, and the second thing is dhikrullah. And the Prophet ﷺ has not specified how much time or how much dhikr should be in the khutbah. And, but from his amal, from his practice, the way the Prophet ﷺ used to give khutbah, and the way Sahaba Ridwanullah and the Khulfa Rashidin continued giving khutbah after Rasulullah ﷺ, the khutbah begins with praise of Allah, and then there is shahadatain, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, or, or nashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh, then, then there is some nasiha, there is some hadith, uh, some verse from the Qur'an uh, which incorporates nasiha, and there is at the same time in the second khutbah there is dua for the believers, the khutbah to be divided into two parts, uh, for the khatib to sit in between two parts. These are all part and parcel of the sunnah of khutbah. But the main thing about khutbah is that it is dhikrullah. Uh, dhikrullah. Uh, and the fact that there is nasiha, and uh, but that doesn't mean that the fundamental identity of the khutbah is wa'ad. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his time, many non-Arabs used to come to Medina tul Munawwara, and then Sahaba when they spread out far and wide to different parts of the world, huh, and the people did not used to understand Arabic, and the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, huh, never ever throughout their lives is there even a single incident being reported in any book of hadith uh, with sahih or weak narration in which a khutbah was given in anything but Arabic. Just as our salat is prayed only in Arabic. Uh, somebody, even though a new Muslim, he doesn't know how to recite Arabic. If he learns the meaning of Surah Fatiha, okay, in the very, very beginning, he, d he doesn't know anything, so he could be excused, uh, but you can't continue praying in English. Uh, you have to pray in Arabic. And the Quran has to be recited in Arabic. Uh, similarly, khutbah was given throughout the life of Rasulullah wasallam only in Arabic. Uh, so if the purpose was to provide nasiha on the day of Juma when people are gathered, then for the benefit of the people who would come to Medina to Munawwara as new Muslims, and when Sahaba went out far and wide, uh, and the people did not understand Arabic, okay, perhaps the Sahaba who would lead the people in Salat, they didn't know the native language, but never ever was there even a single incident reported in which any translation of the khutbah ever took place. And now in many places, in different parts of the world, for example in the Indian subcontinent, when, when Jumu'ah is prayed, like the way we do it here, we do 
Initially there's a bayan, and then there's adhan, people are given time for sunnah, then the second adhan, and then there is khutbah, and, and, and so on, and then there is completion of salah. Many people they think, oh it's bidah to give bayan in any other language before the khutbah. And, and in many cases, what people do, they sit around, and then when the khutbah begins, they do a small part in Arabic, and then the rest of the khutbah is in English. Well, if this is bidah, then why is that not bidah? Because in fact, that is a worse bidah than the other one. Which, in, because in the second instance, in which the khutbah is briefly in English, and the rest in, uh, is briefly in, in Arabic, and then the rest in English, that is a worse bidah than the other one, because in this case, one it is distorting and corrupting the practice of the Sahaba and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In here, in which there is a bayan, because nowadays people, they, what they do, they are focused on their watches and times. People have set times for everything, they want to come in, they know many people are working, taking time off college or work and coming to the masjid on time, and they, because the times are advertised, and so then khutbah takes place, and in the meantime there are people, and it's an opportunity to give people nasiya because nowadays unfortunately people don't come to masjids. People don't listen to sermons. People don't bother learning deen. So to accommodate that in some parts of the world, uh, particularly in the Indian subcontinent until recently, and the ulama used to give bayans or lectures after Juma Salat. Shah Ismail Shahid rahimahullah who was one of the grand ulamas, a couple of hundred years ago in the Indian subcontinent, it was his practice on the deaf Juma. Adhan would be called, khutbah would be given in Arabic, and, uh, and uh, then the Salat would be prayed, and anybody who wanted to stay after the Salat, then there would be a lecture or a nasiha after Salatul Juma. In many tablighi marakis, for example, this sunnah is still followed. And the sunnah of only doing khutbah in Arabic, and then the Salat, and then they want to encourage people and then they pray and then they give a lecture after the prayer. But nowadays in many masajid, um, there is a bayan in English or the, or the, 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 the local language uh, before the actual khutbah and people say, oh brother, this is bidah. And but then the same people, what they do, colleges, university and other places, they do a very brief khutbah in Arabic and then the rest in English and in other language, that is also not sunnah. Uh, because if they leave one practice, they say, Bidah, so is the other one. And the other one is worse than the previous one, because in the previous one, they don't regard it as a part of khutbah. But in the second instance, uh, to say it in English is clearly against the practice of the Prophet and Sahaba, but it is regarded acceptable. Uh, that is not the case. Uh, if people think that it is permissible, uh, was and nasiha for people to understand, uh, khutbah is dhikrullah. But the Qur'an is a nasiha. In huwa illa dhikra lil alameen. As Allah says in the Qur'an, this is a reminder, this is a warning, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is tabligh for all the people of the world. Uh, but we don't recite Qur'an in English or in Urdu or Somalian or any other language. Uh, we recite Qur'an in Arabic, we, and we listen and we read translations, uh, but that is not the same as Qur'an. Qur'an is in Arabic. As Allah has revealed it, inna anzalna hu, inna anzalna Qur'anan arabiyya la'allakum taqilun. And ulama have stated because every language has its special influence and special effect. Arabic is the language of Qur'an, language of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it will be the language of Jannah. So Allah wants Muslims to keep their association with the language of Arabic, with the language of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In, in, in many other languages of the world, they lack that respect and appreciation for elders and for goodness. In English, everyone is you, whether you're a child, whether you are... You are a man or a woman, uh, or a young or an old, respectable, unrespectable person. But in many Islamic languages, there's different ways to address elders, to address youngsters, and to address people with respect, usually in the plural form. Uh, so Allah wants us uh, to maintain our ties with our, with our history. And ulama have stated, in fact, uh, it is... It is faradul kifaya upon every community that there should be people who understand Arabic. 
Uh, if there is nobody in the community who understands Arabic, then the whole community will be sinful. Because the Quran is in Arabic. Because sayings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam are in Arabic. So if people don't understand the original source, uh, it is our, it's an obligation upon us. Uh, then the whole community will be sinful. But even if a few people understand Arabic properly enough, to understand Quran and Hadith of the Prophet wasallam, then that obligation will be relieved on behalf of the whole community and will suffice. But if not enough people understand uh, for it to be sufficient for the community, then the whole community will be sinful. Uh, so real khutbah is in Arabic. And Allahu Akbar. But because of fitna and fasad, many people, Allahu Akbar, don't understand issues of the things and very, very quick to point out and fingers at fingers at others, but don't look at their own amal. Uh, don't look at their own amal. So Juma is a very, very important time for Muslims as communities, uh, something that people should not take lightly. And as we said earlier, the Prophet wasallam, uh, he encouraged people that they should prepare their best and have a bath, use miswak, use itar, come to salat early, come and say salat upon the Prophet wasallam, read surat kaf, come to your prayers early. And when the khutbah starts, then everybody should listen attentively whether they understand or they don't understand. Uh, may Allah Rabbul Alameen have mercy upon us and enable us uh, to understand the Quran and Hadith and Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may he enable us to live like Muslims and die like Muslims.